right. Welcome to a solitaire war game review and my thoughts on it uh, here on the Player's Aid. My name is Grant, and I played today, if, if you didn't see, I played two turns of uh, the base game just to show you how mechanics work, how combat works, movement, uh, how morale is affected, the supply phase, all kinds of different elements. I also gave a lot better introduction than I probably will give here, so go ahead and watch that first, uh, and then you can come in and get my final thoughts. But Stalingrad advanced to the Volga 1942 from Revolution Games Take Aim Designs. This is a Mike Ranella design, and it's a solitaire war game, a very cool solitaire war game. It's in his area kind of impulse system. It does say area movement series. This is technically area movement, but I think it would have been better named area impulse or area activation. But this is volume one, so that's a good sign. I think this is a good series. I think it's a very good game. Uh, spoiler alert. And I hope to see more of these in the future that I can get out and play uh, because I really enjoyed this. We 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 have played other Mike Ranella designs. We played um, Patton's, Patton's Victor, Victory, the Battle of Aircourt. That was a really fun game. Some very cool mechanics. Alexander played e Last Battle, E.A. Shima. I want to say we played one more, but we've always enjoyed those area impulse, area move, war games. They're, they're pretty rules light, counter density is low. Um, and, and very understandable, and frankly, a, a good time. And I think that's what I would say about this design. Its biggest strength is it's interesting. The mechanics are interesting. The elements work well together. There's a lot of real uh, reality thrown into this with supply, some random events we'll talk about. Uh, some, there's a lot of dice rolling. Combat is is never guaranteed. Um that's, that's the case in real warfare, but also in these war games. You, you've got to roll some dice because that's what puts the tension in it. What you're trying to do with this game is manage your morale, manage your supply points, manage your units, and take anywhere from three to five areas every turn because at the end of turn nine, you've got to control 40 areas. Now, I played this three full times and two turns of a fourth. I haven't won it yet. I consider myself pretty good at games. I consider myself pretty good at this game because I understand it. But in the end, it's going to come down to you got to risk it sometimes. You, you're going to have bad odds. You're not going to have as many support units as you want to add the most modifiers. Your morale might be lagging. Um, you might have not have the support uh, air units or your artillery or your engineers. And you're just going to have to say, forget it. It's going to come down to 2d6 versus 2d6, and you're going to roll, and you're going to decide, you know, that's going to make the decision about whether you win that battle or not. So you can play this game very well. You can play effectively, be efficient, do some good things, and still ultimately lose. I'm going to go ahead and take the cover off. Um, so here you can see the game. This is at the end of turn two, so we're going into turn three here. Uh, Germans start here on the western edge of Stalingrad and in three areas on the north. And their goal is to move through and control these areas. Very challenging. There's a lot of them, a lot of areas. The areas uh, get more and more difficult as you get, you know, the outskirts are clear. The terrain modifiers for the defenders aren't as good. You get to some elevated heel, hills, they start to improve by one or two. You get into the light urban, they, they start to become a three and a four. And then the, the black spaces against the Volga are the city centers there in Stalingrad. And they have full terrain modifiers of four. Plus the units in these black areas are a lot more powerful uh, than the units in the outskirts. Here's an example. This is a guard's 10 combat value unit, that is very, very challenging to defeat. You're going to have to get some good rolls. You're going to have to have some good resources at your disposal, and you still might not win. Um, so so it's, it gets harder as you get closer. They get better terrain. Uh, the, the other really cool thing about the defenders, about the game itself, 
So it's important to remember that the defending units here are static. They never move. They're not going to move from one area to another. They're not going to cut your supply. These units have chosen to hole up in these areas based on their defensive values. They're listed here on the board. Uh, here is a plus two. This is a plus two, a plus four, a plus four. Here's a plus three. Um, I think this is a clear area that only offers plus one. But they've holed up there and they've chosen one of five defensive strategies. So let me show you this Soviet defensive strategy chart. And the good thing about this player aid is you'll see it, it uh, points you to 9.4 in the rule book. So that case and point setup. But you've got five different types of units here that you're going to encounter. Heroes, ambush, barrage, fanatic, and guards. Each of them has their special ability. For example, when you encounter a, a hero's unit, they're going to reduce German morale by one after the combat resolution, and it's going to apply if the Soviet unit was eliminated. If you just defeat him, they're going to make your morale go down because they put up a good fight. Um, you can ignore that result, though, if it results in a repulse, meaning they defeated you, they rolled higher and their modifiers were higher than you, or you overran them, meaning you overcame them by their total defensive value, uh, by greater than your, their defensive value, and really just bull rushed them. So in this case, if you overrun them, that effect's not going to happen. Ambush. Kind of another one, lead attacking unit will be eliminated unless you overrun them. Uh, barrage, very, very powerful, very bad. The German player must either place one of the attacking units in the out of action box. So that's kind of your dead box. You have to pay to get those back on the map. Um, or you have to flip them all, retreat from the area, uh, and, and not attack. I did that one time during my playthrough because I, I just, here it was, I just couldn't afford to lose another one of these units. What I'm going to do is probably bring in a more powerful unit and a couple of weaker units, and, and I can lose one of the weaker infantry units, so I'll, I'll probably do that in order to uh, better win that. But then you've got the Fanatics, which are the worst. The combat role, role is a success, meaning you've defeated them. You're Modified combat attack total is higher than their defensive total. It will be changed to a stalemate. A stalemate means that nothing happened. You have to stay. Nobody loses units, and you're going to have to fight it out next turn. If the, the result was a repulse, stalemate, or overrun, you can ignore uh, that. So you're going to have to, once again, beat them by more than their defensive value. Not easy to do. Finally, the guards, and I showed you that 10-value guard down here. Uh, the guards, they're going to get to roll additional dice in the combat resolution phase. Normally, each side only rolls two six-siders. If a guards unit is in a normal area, they're going to roll three. They're going to have to drop one of the, the lowest of the three, so they don't get four, three dice. If they're in an area adjacent to the Volga, they're going to roll four, and they're going to drop the two lowest value. That just gives them better odds to roll higher and you need to roll better than them a lot of times to defeat them because their values are so much better. So that defensive strategy, I think, is a very unique, abstracted way to deal with units. Then you add, once again, their combat or their terrain effects modifier to their total. Most of these units are going to be anywhere from 8 to I think the highest is going to be around 13. Then there are random event charts. You're going to roll this every turn. Sometimes they're going to get a plus one defensive value here at Commissars. Sometimes your artillery shells, shells aren't going to work uh, well enough. So you, you, you're going to have to factor that into a lot of the combat in order to, to understand how you're going to overcome uh, these units. So I think the AI bot is very good in this. I think it's, it's very easy to run, very easy to control. They're not moving a lot. In the advanced mode, you can cut off uh, and isolate Soviet units. Uh, for instance, up here at the top, in order to be in supply, Soviet units have to be able to trace through friendly areas 
over to the Volga. So if you can somehow cut these units here by taking over three or four of these ter territories, they're going to have uh, less combat value, defense strengths, won't be able to roll as much. I mean, there's all kinds of effects, but that's only in the advanced game. But I like the way it's set up with the abstraction of the, of the AI. It just makes it very easy to control, very easy to work uh, with. And frankly, it gives a very good and very difficult challenge for you to overcome. You're not going to defeat this game uh, easily. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take some work. Um, the way you win this game is in before nine turns is over, you have to control a total of 40 areas. Now, you start with nine, so that means you've got to take over 31 areas in order to win the game. So in nine turns, that means you're going to have to get three to four every turn. Here at the end of turn two, I have control of 17 areas. So that means I've taken over four each turn. I probably should have pushed it a little bit and got a control of another one or two because in the end, you're going to start running out of supply. Uh, you're going to start running out of effective units and it's going to be harder for you to replace them and buy your air support units. But you've got to control 40. If you ever do that at any time during the game, at the end of a turn, you automatically win. If at the end of nine, you have 40, it's an operational victory, which is ultimately historically what happened here. So this is the drive up onto the city of Stalingrad, not necessarily the battle within uh, the city of Stalingrad. So that's the way you win the game. You'll notice in the turn area, there's additional turns. There are some, um, what do they call them? Optional rules. You can do all different types of optional rules from the supply that I mentioned uh, to a few other rounds, limiting air power, Pavlov's house has a specific unit that's very, very challenging. You can reduce your starting morale. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that. It's hard enough going from a 19 to a 15. You can increase German supply. Now, that's one that I think uh, might, be, might be valuable. It's going to make it a little easier. It basically turns a one result uh, into, what does it say? Reroll, to a reroll, which you're going to roll at least one one every time. Um... But you, you can add some optional rules to this. That, that's why I like it. Now, you'll also notice, now I've killed seven or eight units. But here in the counter tray, these are light urban, these two wells right here. So there's about 20 light urban spaces and there's about 28 counters. So you have some randomness in what numbers or what areas are uh, defended and, and, and I really like that. So here's a, a four and a five unit. I, I wish those were out there. They, they weren't in this last game I played. But that gives you some ability in later games to have a, a, a different setup and results from the units that you are attacking. The same goes for the, uh, the heavy units there in black. Um, the elevated and the clear, there's not as many units. So you're going to kind of face those regularly. Uh, but that that's fine. I think that added element of, you know, you've got more than you're going to put out aids in the replayability of this game because you're never going to know exactly uh, w what's going to come up against you. So I think there's some nice elements there. A couple of things about the sequence of play that I found extremely interesting, and I really applaud Mike uh, for adding these in because they – they, in essence, helped abstract a lot of the elements involved in this battle and made it into a very simple, playable game. Uh, the supply phase, phase is very cool. You're going to roll 46. The Germans are going to roll four of these uh, black dice. Oh, my gosh. That's the best roll I've ever had in this game. I wish I actually had that. That's a 23. So you're, you're going to get anywhere. You're going to roll 46. You're going to get anywhere from 4 to 24 supply that you're going to add to your total, and you got to work through that to buy units. Um, air assault or air support units cost three, artillery support cost one, engineers cost two, replacement of infantry costs one, uh, replacement of art armor costs two, and then you can spend three to increase morale uh, by one. But I, I really like the supply phase. I think it works very well. Typically, you're going to see your supply be anywhere from 8 to 15 at the most. 
but once again, I said that and I rolled a 23. So it, it can happen and, and be good for you. Uh, I thought that was a very good abstraction. The other abstraction that I think is very cool is the bloody streets. So bloody streets, what is bloody streets? So before the combat phase starts, you're going to look for areas where you occupy an area and a Soviet unit is alive in an area, meaning it's not controlled. So let's go ahead and use this area as an example. I've got four, uh, four units here from the 24th Panzer. Got an armored car and a couple of Panzer threes um, against a, a, a fanatic that let's say I didn't, I didn't destroy last time. So if I'm there, Bloody Streets is going to be enacted. And this is an abstraction of all the elements that went on from collapsing buildings to limited supply to, to difficulty with mines and traps and uh, Soviets hiding in sewers and coming out of, out of pipes. You know, all those things lead to this Bloody Street concept which basically means there's some partisan activity, some non-combat activity that is hurting and affecting how effective the Germans can be. So what's going to happen for the, each of those areas, and you'll usually have one or two, you're going to roll a six-sider. If you roll a one to a four, there's no effect. On a five, the Germans are going to lose a morale. Once again, think about snipers, uh, mines, etc., barbed wire that they're getting caught up in, their morale's going down. If you roll a six, you're going to flip the units in that area. They're going to be spent and reduce German morale by one. And units that are spent cannot attack. So ultimately, if you roll a six, you're not going to be able to attack that round. And you're going to have to go through that one more time. If your morale ever gets reduced to zero, you automatically lose the game. You're going to lose a morale at the end of every round or every turn, I mean. That's the very last thing you do. You're going to reduce morale by one. You're going to lose morale if you get defeated in combat. Um, and then sometimes these events on the event table uh, might lead. Nope, they don't lead to reduce morale. Uh, but on the bloody streets, you can lose morale. But I really like this bloody streets concept. You'll also notice that the Soviets will add plus one to that roll if they have a guard unit. And they are located in a plus four terrain effects modifier area. So the, the guards unit that I showed you here, this 10 guards who is located adjacent to the Volga is going to get four dice. He's also in a plus four area. He's in the grain elevator. More often than not, you're not going to defeat him on the first turn. So he's going to add plus one because he's in. So all of a sudden on a roll of uh, four, five or a six, you're going to start losing morale and losing uh, the ability to, to attack. So I really think that's, I think those two abstractions really made this game very unique and interesting. Okay, combat. Let, let's talk about combat. I'm going to show you an example of combat, and I'm actually going to go into this really tough um, grain elevator space. All right. So we turn it over. That's, he has a 10 plus a 4 his combat strength, and you're going to have to use these 20-sided dice. These are mine, so I use these to show the strength just because you're going to change that up and down quite often. So your attack value or the defensive value of the Soviet unit is their printed strength value, which here is a 10. Well, it's a 10. Trust me. I don't know why it's not focusing. Uh, and the terrain effects modifier, which here is printed on the board at a plus 4. So he has a 14, remember remember that. Then you attack with a lead unit. Your lead unit, you pick uh, typically a unit that has the best combat factor. The counters here, you can see it's a six, six, six attack, six movement. So I pick that one, he's a six. I'm going to add plus one support to that total for every other unit in that combat. You can only have four units maximum. Stacking is four, four in combat. So that makes my attack a nine. I'm also going to add plus one if at least three of the attacking units are in the same division. That's called divisional integrity. So all of a sudden, this guy's a 10, and then you add plus one for morale. 
on the morale marker, if it's strong, which is 10 or higher, the attack value gets a plus one. If it's shaken, which is nine or lower, the defenders will get a plus one. So you want to definitely keep that morale high. Um, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So I'm an 11 unmodified. All right. So we have a tough row to hoe here. 11 to a 14. That's about the best attack that I can get. Now, you're going to have a group of support units over here that can be used to benefit uh, your attacks. I'm going to throw a couple here in this box. There are two different, three different types in, in effect. There's an engineer unit. They add plus two to any attack. In the advanced rules, they also remove the rebel uh, modifier. There's an artillery support, which is going to give plus two to an attack. And then the most important one is the Stuka, the air support unit. What they're going to do, I'll flip that over. And on the back, they show you what they do. The defender's value is going to be reduced by a D6 roll. So you're going to roll a six and then reduce his strength by that amount. So here's how combat resolution works. You come up with the defensive value total. It's 14. You come up with the attack value, value total. It's 11. And now we decide what, what support units do I throw into the battle? So I'm definitely going to use one of these air support units. So I'm going to throw that there. I'm also going to use two of these artillery units. So I think that's what I'm going to use. I'm not, I can use up to four. You can use one for each unit that is attacking. So automatically you flip these over and you have to decide what you're putting into the battle before you roll dice and do everything uh, to review, uh, reduce their defensive, defensive strength. So I'm going to add plus four to my strength. So I go from an 11 to a 15. So there we go, 15. So all of a sudden I'm eclipsing his defensive value by at least one. Then I'm going to use my air support unit. I'm going to roll a D6 and reduce his defensive value by that amount. I rolled a five. So 14 minus five will take it down to a nine there. So all of a sudden I'm a 15 to a nine. I'm six ahead of him. Then these units go away. They go into the used box. You have to buy those back every turn. So you're not going to have enough supply to get these all the time. This is an important battle, though. i got to get that guy out of there. So, modified strength. Mine's a 15. His is a 9. That's, that's pretty good. Then, the German attacker will get 2d6. Because the Soviet has a guards unit adjacent to the Volga, he's going to get to roll 4d6 and remove the two lowest results. So, this is going to be hard. All right, so we rolled. They're going to remove their one and their four. I didn't roll very well. I rolled a five. He rolled an 11. So his modified strength is a 20. My modified strength is a 20. This is considered a stalemate. Nothing happens. I flip my guys to use. They are spent. I don't lose morale. He doesn't die. I'm going to have to fight him next turn. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to have to endure uh, that bloody streets um, at the beginning of the next combat phase. So it potentially could hurt me. Not a great result. I put a lot of resources into that attack and it didn't work out. Now, let's say I had rolled even one more, one or two more. I rolled a seven. All of a sudden, I'm a 22 to his 20. I win. And I'm, I just have a, a, a victory. I remove this unit. I throw it in the, uh, into the counter well where it's supposed to be. I then place a control marker and I flip all my guys to spent. That means they can't attack anymore this turn. Uh, that battle is over. I then move my control one up. Uh, that was a good result. Now, <clears throat> if he had rolled higher than my, my attack value, I would have lost my lead unit. My lead unit in this instance was my recce vehicle. That would have gone to the out of action box. I would have had to have retreated and my morale would have reduced by one. 
combat can be very brutal. You can see that that's a very, very tough combat. Now, I would say the ones that are worse, although that was very bad, the Barrage and the Fanatics. I think I already talked to you about the, the all of them I, I went through, but the Barrage, you're going to remove one of those attacking units at the beginning of the battle, and then the Fanatics, you've got to overrun them. Now, overrun is an interesting thing. So let, let's use this same combat, and let's just say I rolled much better, and they rolled much worse. So they rolled, a, let's just say, a three and a two. So my total is a 15 plus eight, 23. They rolled a 14. Well, that's not good enough. They would have had to overhaul a two. So let's say that's the result. Nine plus four is 13. 15 plus eight is 23. Um, 23 minus 13 is 10. If I'm one greater than their defensive value, which was a nine, that's considered an overrun. Now, overrun will stop, let me, let me show you in the rule book, will stop the negative results from the heroes, which make you lose a, uh, make you lose a morale. Here we go, overrun. If the success and the difference between the attack and defensive value is greater than the defense strength of the Soviet unit, an overrun is achieved. The Soviet unit is eliminated and removed from the map. All attacking units are flipped to their spent side. Place a German control marker in the area. It will cancel the result of a overrun. Will cancel the effects of heroes, ambush, and fanatic. So that's very important to know. And you got to understand when you're trying, when you have to make that decision to make sure you get an overrun or can I just defeat them? That's another interesting part of the game, and it becomes a resource management uh, aspect, which I think is very cool because that's what the Germans had to do here. They had to re they had scarce resources, logistical concerns, and problems. They had to manage those units and the support and the guns and the ammo and the beans well to keep this battle going. So that's a look at combat. Very cool. You're going to have anywhere from four to seven of these combats every round. Each of those combats is going to kind of take two to three minutes. So each turn is going to take you 20 to 25 minutes at a minimum. Uh, and the game's going to play in about an hour and a half to two hours. And uh, I think quicker once you get, uh, get the hang of it. But that's a look at combat. Uh, I, I want to direct your attention here to this record track area. Very important thing in a solitaire game. Sequence of play, clearly printed here. Now, there's no reference to the rules sections, which they could have very easily put Don Phase, section 6.1. That would have helped when you're going back and forth from the rule book, but very helpful that it's printed here. These morale tracks are very useful. I, I think it's easy to use. The turn track is good. You can see when reinforcements are, the game turn. These boxes are nice. I would have moved the used support units down here so that they were closer, but that's ticky-tack. I would have also put a combat track on this so that I didn't have to provide my own 20-siders to track that total combat. I think that would have been nice. They could have put that here, given some additional markers, and made that easy. Now, what I don't like about the way the administration of the game works it's you've got this uh, random events chart here. You're going to roll 4d6, I'm sorry, 3d6, and you're going to do what these say. Now, you can see a lot of these results add uh, plus one to the defensive value of the Soviets there at Commissars. Logistical pause, horrific, roll 1d6. You're going to then spend all the units in those, in those areas that you choose. Artillery shells are going to be plus one versus plus two artillery shell sort shortage. There's some other effects here. They could have very easily provided you a little chit that you could have put on the battle uh, board, or I could have, I could create a battle board. But those chits would have been would have been very very important. I also think if they're not going to do the battle board, they need to provide uh, chits and these twenty siders. But I've got dozens and dozens of dice, different dice that I can use, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, overall, this game is absolutely fantastic. I've had a great time playing it. 
I think the production is absolutely fantastic. Mounted map board, uh, really nice thick gray core counters. I had to trim these. They're very clear, uh, well presented. I like the colors. The colors actually um, coincide with their that, those unit starting areas. So the 29th Panzer here starts here in area, I think this is area six, and it's peach, which matches their color. The red guys here, I think these are the 20, 94th, uh, they start in this red area. It's marked red, the pink and the pink. So that's very nice, helps you keep track of that. That's a very cool production point that helps the game be played. Really like their use of colors. I think the counters look great. I love the uh, the Soviet units, the fact that they're hidden and then you flip them over and then they have this different defensive value that's a pain in the neck. Really enjoy that. The, the map is utterly gorgeous. It's so good looking, it's unreal. What they've done is they've done areas over kind of a map of the time and you can see the different streets and buildings and terrain. And this looks like a military map. It looks like a map that the Germans would have been referring to as this assault was ongoing. Really think that's a great job. I like it. I like it a lot. You've got the, the direction arrows here. Very clear, very readable. Love the counters, love the colors. Uh, the, the player aid, extremely, extremely well done. Here you can see they do have the case and points leading back to the rules, so you can use that very easy. They have boxes reminding you about when you withdraw units and when you have reinforcements, the combat phase, how it's resolved, the attack value, the defense value, movement cost. All of that stuff is on here. The supply cost for all the units right here, the different defensive strategies, and then here's the setup, which actually wasn't necessary Maybe they could have put that battle table on this part. This, to me, was clear once you understood the connection with the colors. Uh, rule book is also very well done. Um, not, a, not a thick rule book, right? You can, you can look here. There's only, I don't see a page number. I really never put page numbers. 14, 15, six, 16 total pages. And of those 16, like three or four are historical notes, suggested reading. Look there, you can see suggested reading. Um, there's also some strategy right here. Mike's put down some, some game strategy to help you kind of at least get in uh, into what you should be doing, how to spend supply points, how to, how to go about combat, different things. I really like that. The rules I thought were very, very clear. With the exception of that one comment I mentioned about uh, the overrun. It says greater than the defensive value, but it doesn't say greater than the modified defensive value uh, when, you, when you have things like the, the Stuka. Now, many of you might be yelling at me saying, well, if it doesn't say it, then you, don't, you, you do it like, I don't know how you do it, right? So I went ahead and adjudicated that meant that it was greater than the value that was modified. So that could have been clearer in the rules. I think every other part of the rules is excellent. Love the art on the box. I think that's very well done. This is one of those boxes that's a very sturdy one inch box. Typically Revolution does poly bag games, but this one they went ahead and did a really nice production. Great box, great rules, fantastic player aid, fantastic mounted map board. Uh, good counters, excellent. They even gave us uh, eight total dice. I am, this is a quibble, I'm not a fan of the rounded edge dice. I, I They spin a lot. Give me a flat edge dice so I can just roll them and they're going to stop. Um, but that's also part of the tension when you roll that and you're watching those spin around. Sometimes you're like, oh crap, what's going to happen? Um, overall, I, I absolutely love this game. Played it three full times now and then started another I'm going to keep this one in my collection. I think it's very well done and very unique and interesting. I think you should give this a shot if you like solo games. It's abstracted a little bit. Uh, the defensive units don't move, which I think is okay in this situation. They would have holed up. They wouldn't do a lot of counterattacks until the moments were right. Um, but there's a lot of very cool historical elements here. The bloody streets is cool. Love the support units. Love how the supply is figured. 
this game is well put together and just comes out as a very uh, unique and interesting experience. So those are my thoughts uh, here on Stalingrad Advance to the Volga, 1942 from Revolution Games. I hope you enjoyed my comments. I hope you look into the game. I think it's a great value for what you're going to get. Um, and I look forward to, remember, it's just volume one. I look forward to future volumes, and hopefully we can be playing some uh, Battle of the Bulge stuff or other other uh, different great battles there from World War One or World War II or World War One. So uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Check out the playthrough if you didn't already do that. Uh, there's other great content creators that have done other content as well, Stuka Joe uh, and a couple of others. So check their stuff out as well. Uh, thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.